There we go. Yeah. But he um he was talking about how we value in the I advertise on there, and in reality it is. It's like the ch- the cheapest advertising online to do is on Facebook right now, and that won't be that way forever. It's yeah, absolutely. It it is so this. yeah. That's intro right there. That's perfect. That's like the uh, the teaser segue. Okay. So yeah, that no, but that you're absolutely right. The um, Facebook is the most undervalued marketplace yeah. and, and, and attention-grabbing platform there is, and people just don't quite understand how powerful it really is. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, so let's get into this. Uh, hey, everybody, welcome to the Brody Media Podcast. I'm Matt Brody, and today, if you're watching on video, you've already figured this out, but if you're listening, uh, this will be new. Sitting beside me today is not Beeve. Beeve had to go off and play with Gary Vaynerchuk. So uh, today, I've got... Patrick O'Connor. Patrick, why don't you introduce yourself, uh, tell people who you are and what you do. All right. Uh, I am the number one realtor for Caldwell Banker in the Carolinas, uh, based right here out of Lexington where I grew up and selling real estate all over the Midlands. How'd you get into real estate? So I was always interested in real estate, um, but I kind of took a different path. So I was a music educator, um, taught in the schools, and did that for about 10 years. But really, when I was a kid, we all we moved a lot, and I loved the process of moving, and always enjoyed the process of buying or selling a house. Did that a few times, got into real estate, investing and flipping. Uh, did that a couple of times, and we started having kids. We wanted to move back down south. I was teaching in a suburb of Chicago. It's cold in Chicago, we wanted to come home. And I said, well, why don't we just make a big shift? We come back here to Lexington, and, uh, I try this real estate thing, and luckily it worked out. And you have, in a, in a, what I imagine is a fairly short time for real estate agents, really grown into a, uh, to a big, big name here. Uh, I've, you know, I'm doing well. I have a long way to go, a lot to learn. But been in real estate five and a half years. Um, I, yeah, I guess going on six years here at the end of this year. Uh, but love it. Glad I made the switch and really enjoyed doing it. I, and not that I didn't enjoy education, but this for me, um, I feel like I did that for enough time and wanted something new, and this has been perfect. Awesome. So you've grown your business, obviously. So what was it like when you first started out? Was, the, was it the market was really different? What were you doing when, the fir- when you first started? So I came in at a good time because the market was starting on the, you know, especially this area, we're always last in the Midlands to get everything. The, the crash in 2007-8 impacted us last. We also were one of the last to see uh, the market kind of pick up. So when I got in and tail end of 2014, the market was starting to pick up, but it really didn't accelerate until 16, 17, 18, which... You know, 20 years looking at the market, 2006 was the strongest market nationally. Here in the Midlands, it was 2018. Um, And that was kind of a progressive thing. So I got in at the right time and it was different. I mean, just something I I wasn't used to, um, uh, just a very different business, but I pretty much grabbed my broker and I said, what do I need to do to be successful? And then actually did what she told me to do. And I tell everybody, real estate's not hard it's just time consuming you got to put the effort in a lot it's of time and effort. Yeah. yeah absolutely you got i'm sure you spent a lot of time hustling and grinding and getting your name yeah. out there in the early days i'm sure you probably did a little bit differently how did you get your your name out there so at, at, when i started i was really slinging newsletters out in uh, newspaper boxes so and maybe people watching it this uh got those but i put them out in about 40 to 45 neighborhoods every single month in the newspaper boxes where I just gave market information specific to the neighborhood, featured some listings. And I figured that I wanted to do whatever I could from you know, five o'clock in the morning till 6 p.m. at night until I got my business started. So it really was a startup business for me. So every moment was dedicated to something to, to get my name out there, to provide information, provide value with the hope that somebody would call me and want me to help them buy or sell a house. So it was a lot of, uh, a lot of just putting out material, making connections. Also, I'm, I'm big into uh, B&I and networking, so getting into a B&I group. And then really, it's just taking care of people, doing what's right, helping people buy and sell homes, and, and uh, you know, kind of snowball effect. Yeah, I, I love what you said, because I think that's so important. And I, I tell our listeners, and I tell people that I meet with all the time, that the, the best thing you can do to grow your business and your brand is provide value. 
so many times I see people instantly walk in the room. It's like, you know, they walk in the room and they propose marriage, right? Yeah. They're like, like, hi, I'm here, buy me, right? Like, it's like, hire me, you know, without providing any value first. And so I love what you were doing, even in newsletters, like back in print, right? You were providing value to people, talking about information. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell people all the time that if you can provide people one of the three E's, you'll be successful. It's either education, entertainment, or escapism. And if you can do two of those together, even better. See so if you can provide education and entertainment at the same time. Uh, it's a it's a two for win. But you were out there literally doing that, as where I see so many other people who are just you know need to sell your house. We can sell your house, yeah. you know, without providing any value there. Well, and it's really things are changing. The market's changing. Real estate's changing. The the way people buy and sell is changing. So you're right. I mean, it's all about providing value now. My model in 2014 is so much different than it is now, and that's been do, just based on me watching what's going on, looking what's going on in other markets across the country, and then figuring out a way to bring those strategies here to help people buy and sell. So let's talk about that. What are you? What are what are your sort of your core marketing practices right now? So you know my I I, I know the exact number. So 78 percent of what I do is listing related. Uh, the rest are working with buyers. And I love both aspects of it, but I really love selling a home and, and listing and marketing a home. And I, it really is because of all the marketing I get to do. So the traditional way of selling a home has been put it on MLS and hope for the best. And usually agents are just taking cell phone photos, not hiring a professional photographer, but it's beyond just pretty pictures, it's about what you do with them. And it it all comes down to, you know, I think of myself as a marketing person that specializes in real estate. That's amazing, because that's exactly how how we teach it. And that's, if you've listened to the podcast before, Beav, who who owns Tactical Baby Gear, um, that's exactly, he he says, you know, we look at ourselves as a marketing company that happens to sell diaper bags. So you'll love that you literally quoted that, like you're, you're like a marketing guy that happens to sell real estate. Absolutely, I mean, it's, and the thing about selling a home is you can't force somebody to buy a home. It's all about tapping into their needs and their emotion. And I know, so my, my marketing has developed from a lot of print, which I still do a lot of print, print's very effective, but more to, you think about the way people buy homes. They're on Zillow, they're on Realtor.com, they're on Facebook, and it's really, it's, the house has got to be visual, appeal, visually appealing. So it's not just about pretty pictures, but it's also about video. And I went all in on video two years ago and saw a dramatic uh, increase of the number of homes I sold, how quickly they sold, uh, the price they sold at, um, because people really want to, they want to see something that interests them, excites them, and it's got to go beyond more than just cell phone pictures and a photo slideshow on a, on a listing. Yeah, so you, this is, so for those who are listening and watching, this is, Patrick and I have never actually met in person before. Um, we, we've got some friends in some, some similar circles and stuff, and I'm also uh, a member in, in BNI. But um, we've never actually met. But what I loved about what you were doing is that it struck a chord with me because I, I started off in photography and video production. That was my, my core background, even back in high school and stuff. Um, and... And I would see realtors all the time because as a photographer, they would reach out and be like, hey, can you take a, you know, a picture of the house? And then I'd, you know, they, I'd quote them a price and they're like, no, yeah. no, I'll, I'll just do it with my cell phone. I'm like, oh, it kind of hurts. And, like, and then I go and I, I, I check out their stuff. And I'm like, oh, man, yeah. those are terrible. Like they're like dark, gloomy yeah. houses of death. So, well, yeah. Think about it. People have a preconceived notion of the value of a home before they even step foot in the door. And if you don't present the property in its best light, not just the photos, but the progression of the photos as you move through from 1 to 30, we, 36 pictures on MLS, from 1 to 36, you've got to really control what they see and how they see it. Um, I'll give you a great example. So I listed a home on Friday, actually listed on Thursday, and said there's no showings until Saturday. And this was all very strategic. On the lake, very low inventory on the lake right now. Um, and this price point, uh, we were right under 300000 So our goal was to list it on Thursday, allow people in on Saturday, and then take offers throughout the weekend. And, you know, we did the video, we did the pictures, and put it all together. 
and put it out there and people went nuts when they saw what it was, where it was, and you can't show something like that from just photos. So incorporating the video and we had 1800 views on the video in the first 12 hours. Wow. And then locally, you know, I do uh, geo-targeting uh, ads on Facebook. By the end, I think I looked this morning, we were up to about 3800. Now the house sold 27 showings from, we a few slipped in on, on Friday night, all the way through Saturday, showings and request. And we finally had to cut it off and the house went well above asking price, multiple offers. But that same house was listed just two years ago by another another agent with not great photos. And I hate we're putting this out there, but it, reality. Yeah, but content matters. Yeah, not great photos. And right about the same, actually it was a little lower list price. So the big difference there, it's not me, it's just the marketing right. that makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. The 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 I actually I think I saw that um, cuz I think you posted in like an aerial view from the lake looking yeah. out with the the dock and the the lift and I I told my wife about it. I was like there's a there's a house on the lake for 300,000 with a dope. And it's a manufactured home. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. So, she was like I was like, yeah, I was like we need a we need a lake house. Yeah, right. <laughs> absolutely. But um yeah, but I mean, so let's talk a little bit about that. So, clearly um, it's not just video in the traditional sense of of a handheld camera, you're also obviously implementing things like drones and stuff to get aerials and things like that. So, um, is, have you found that that's been been pretty important for you as well? So I found it was October 2017. I'm a big Tom Ferry fan. I don't know if you know Tom Ferry, but number one real estate coach in the world, just out of California. Great, great guy, and really forward thinking in the way of what a real estate agent should do and how they should market. And I went to one of his conferences and he said, you've got to incorporate video. Video, everything's gonna be video online in the next couple of years. And like now, 87% of marketers use video to market their uh, either, you know, in, in any field, in, in any, when they're selling anything. And then I went from October to December trying to shoot video, but really just sucking at it. And I'd shoot the same video over and over and, uh, and finally got to a point where I put something together I was okay putting out on Facebook, and I put it out, and you know, it got a lot of views, a lot of comments. I look back at that video now, and it like I get a little sick watching it. It's, just <laughs> it's atrocious. Yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> and I, I did a few like that, but in our market at that time, there were not a lot of people doing video. And then I thought, well, you know, my creative uh, fine arts education background, so why, let me go further with this because people really don't care about me standing in front of a house saying, you know, look at this four bedroom, three bath. They just don't care. They want something that's engaging and creative. Um, and I started doing my kind of creative series of videos where I've had my kids playing hide and go seek in a house where you saw the house through them playing hide and go seek. Um, I had a, and that had 46,000 views within two weeks on social media, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn and uh, YouTube and then I had a dancer with the South Carolina ballet that had 27,000 views within two days I mean these are just going viral locally and being shared and, and passed on um, I've done a few others that though that's what I enjoy the most is coming up with a concept and then people really looking at it and, and it well I loved that because I thought that was so that was one of the things that when I my first sort of experience with you in video was watching the ballet yeah. the ballet dancer get the house and I just went how did he come up with that that is brilliant like it was just like I mean like you don't it's it was so different that there was no way it couldn't stand out yeah and I thought that was really cool I was like that's he's he's on to something here he's he What's understands crazy it crazy about that is there's a real estate agent here in my office who pulled me aside and said man that video was great but the, the house really not that great of a house and it was a nice house but you know it sold at the top of the price point it was one of the highest sales in that neighborhood in 20 years absolutely because of that dancer great house was it worth what we got for it probably not worth that much but the marketing worked and it sold uh for a really high price yeah. so i did my job absolutely so, happy, yeah. so um speaking of your job so a lot of what you're doing is is not just marketing the house 
it's marketing you as your value, like what you bring to the table and, and offering that. So, and I think that's an important thing that we, we kind of touched on is that a lot of businesses, not just real estate agents, but, but other service businesses, even, um, you know, e-commerce businesses and stuff like that, they, they often tend to overlook that branding step where you're building awareness and building trust yeah. and they simply go right into the ask for the sale. Yeah. And it seems to me like you've spent a, a significant amount of time uh, working on your personal branding mm -hmm. so that when people hear your name, it's a name they trust. Yeah. I mean, I, I the big thing is I think the way a, a lot of real estate is done here, it can be done better. And you look at other markets where this is common, you know, for people to really, for agents to invest in their marketing for the client's home. And what I found, it, it's expensive to do that, but the homes sell faster, they sell for more money, the sellers are thrilled, and then they refer me more business. So it's a, it's a big payoff in the end. But you know, my goal through, especially video and putting out all the video content I do, it's just to show people exactly what it is I do. So, you know, I love when I go to an appointment. I went to one last week and I said, well, why'd you give me a call? And they said, well, you're the video guy. I, I love that. Yeah. That, that's just great. And I want them to know that I'm not the agent that's just going to put it out there and wait for it to sell and then right. have to check. I mean, it's a it's about more than that. Um, and that's another thing. I don't you've seen my vlog I'm yeah out. yeah and that's a big part of that is just to show kind of my process and how I get how I operate and what I do um, and you know that was a really uncomfortable thing to do it's still I enjoy it a little more now we filmed last week for an upcoming vlog I, I like it a little more now than I did before but I think people want to see that it's, yeah I mean this, this is this is something that I tell people a lot because they don't quite they're like, well, I don't understand why anyone would want to watch me. I'm like, that's why we love reality television, yeah. right? It's why, you know, we don't, there's not as many sitcoms as there used to be. It's all reality TV and game shows because we, we want to see the real people doing real things. It's, yeah. uh, it's why vlogs took off. It's why people like Casey Neistat have a career that they have. Um, and, and I think there's just so much value in sharing that story because it's, it's even if, you know, there were 10 other real estate agents in the Columbia, Lexington, Midlands area who were vlogging. None of them have your perspective, right? Not just Patrick O'Connor's perspective, but none of them have, you have your own perspective mm -hmm. and your own way of doing things. And if you're trying to educate somebody on something, you might be saying the exact same thing that someone else has said, but the way that you say it, something about you connects with them and they understand it because of you rather than someone else. Um, but all of that goes into that key brand building. Yeah. And that is what, um, what I always tell people is, is that the brand building is what helps you create your warm leads, yeah. right? It's yeah. so much harder to sell a cold sell than it is to sell somebody who's already heard of you and already has a, a relationship with you because they've seen your content. Yeah. So let's, let's walk through that. I think, um, I think the audience would be interested to know and because we talk about the content creation side of it. So walk through how you're doing let's talk about the vlog like how are you how are you doing the vlog are you vlogging yourself are you like me with the the, the selfie stick or you got someone following you around like beav does like what is so i've got a um for the for the videos i've got a great videographer um, for the houses that that um helps me do all my listing videos and you know this was just me saying okay here's what i want to do i have this idea and then i went out and i looked for somebody who was newer um I, I really like the idea of getting somebody who's into wedding photography or videography and my my videographer does great with listing presentation or listing properties but um, his wedding stuff is exceptional so I think that's where I'm bumping into this I think that's where um, he's so great with the creative content is he's all day he's watching these moments be creative he's making a video out of these the weddings um, and it's box turtle film. You should check that out. He does just a great job. Um, so he does that. For my vlog, I've got another videographer who um, it's usually one or two of them that follow me around for a day or two. And I wanted to switch it up and do two different, just for a fresh, different perspective. Um, and I pretty much looked at what Ryan Sirhant, Million Dollar mm -hmm. Listing, um, the, I think Sirhant team out of New, New York, is doing and I said I want to create something like that where he's showing every aspect of his day 
um, from beginning to end, kind of like a day in the life, um, and just keep it fresh. And I, you know, I wish I was, sometimes I watch it back and I go, well, I wish I was a little bit more interesting and a little funnier, but I think it, it works. Um, and the great thing about it is, so I've been doing this, I put out three vlogs, we've got the fourth one coming up uh, next week, and I went to my high school, 20 year high school reunion last, two weekends ago. And I was really nervous going into this that I wouldn't recognize a lot of the people that I went to school with. Um, but what was great is I had a lot of those people come up to me and talk to me about the vlog. And they, you know, I could tell they felt like we had already caught up over 20 years. Right, yeah. They felt comfortable coming up and they were so supportive. And right away, and I, I had another client call me, we were listing their property. Um, at the end of the week and he said you know we've got a relative in the business we were gonna go with you but you know we don't know you we watched the vlog and we were like this is the right guy to sell our house so that is what I love about it is that right. as uncomfortable as it is it's still it gets people connected to me and what I'm doing it yeah and, and it, be, it separates you in a way that um, and, I, and I don't mean this to sound negative but in the photography industry for example um, you know, like I used to shoot weddings and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, that was the thing. And then and then it became very almost like a commodity in the sense that like digital became uh, very accessible to people. And so then it became, you know, anyone who could go to Best Buy and buy a Canon Rebel could suddenly become a wedding photographer. And they were charging, you know, $200, you know, to shoot a wedding. And like, you know, people were like, why do you charge so much? And like, well, because I'm good at it. Yeah. But you know, they didn't, they were all price shopping and stuff. But when it comes to real estate agents, I feel like, and I'm, I'm not in the real estate industry, so if I'm completely wrong in this, let me know. But most people are probably not having a personal relationship with a, a real estate agent up front, right? They find their real estate agent through a referral or through, you know, a Google search or something like that. And they, or they you know, they happen to, to walk into their Coldwell Banker office near their house or something. Um, but what you're doing is providing accessibility. Mm -hmm. And so people can find you and then they get to know you before they've ever actually met you in person. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's like when I walked in today, I was like, I know him. Wait, I got, I've never actually met him in person. I got to say that. Well, I felt the same way because <laughs> yeah. before you came, I watched some of your stuff and I felt, I mean, it Yeah, it, it, it gives you a connection to people in a way that um, nothing else really can because you're getting to see some reality behind them. Uh, and I think that's, it's a really important piece. And I think that's where marketing in general is going is that, is that personal story, that personal branding. Um, and I love what you said about your, your one videographer who came from the wedding. And so he, he, he you're absolutely right. When you're doing that stuff, you start to find the, the small stories within the big story yeah. and, and being able to have somebody who's working with you that can help find those moments and share those is uh, is huge. So as a piece of advice to anyone who's listening, um, you're more than welcome to, to, to shoot a selfie and, and do stuff that, that helps people understand who you are. Um, and as you do that, you'll get better at it and you'll learn, uh, just like when Patrick was saying, you know, the first couple of times you did stuff, it was miserable and it all went in the yeah. trash. Yeah. Right. But that helped him learn. It helped him get comfortable and even when he thought it was good, like now he's looking back and he's like, I'm so much better now. It's the, you keep learning, you keep doing. When I do a lot of that, just shooting videos on the fly, um, a lot of them in my car and where I just talk about the market, uh, give information about a specific area or like what's going on with real estate on the lake. And I'm getting a lot of great feedback on that as well. And these are just quick, you know, little two minute clips, um, putting it out there and then boosting it to the areas mm -hmm. where it, where it matters. Um, just getting information out there because ev what's interesting is everybody is interested in real estate for the most part I mean people and a lot of that has to do with HGTV and million dollar listing But it's a thing where people are intrigued by it, right? It's well, it's 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 one of those things. It, I'm sure it has a, a, a Multi-pronged facet kind of a scenario where yeah, I mean you watch the TV shows that are popular on like HGTV and it's like the house flippers or house hunters or you know all those kind of shows were sort of fascinated by it. But there's also this sort of it, it kind of to me it 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 hones in on like the core of the American dream, yeah, yeah. you know. And like there's something about like you know being able to buy property and sell property. It just like it really like it does. It it's sort of like everyone can kind of like feel like oh I could I could 
you know, get into that some way or you hear all the time that like, you know, that's a great strategy for building wealth. Yeah. And, and so I think there's a lot of people who hear about it and, and they understand it because it's, it's sometimes it's the goal, you know, they're, they're kind of working at, you know, moving from an apartment to a house and they're just kind of gathering all this stuff in their head for when that, that moment happens for them. But, um, but having someone to follow again, just like you you watch the TV shows, but having someone to follow uh, that you can kind of connect with and gain trust with. And then when that time comes to move from the apartment or buy another house or relocate and you happen to go, Oh, I'm moving towards Columbia. You know, I know a guy. (laughs) So cool. Well, good deal. Um, anything else, any other advice that you have for, for any real estate agent who's starting or been in the business for a while that, uh, that is sort of struggling? I mean, I would say, gosh, that's, Doing the video for me, and, and one thing I do, I, I go to different offices, and I've just presented at uh, Carolina One, or it's One Carolina, what was it? I think One Carolina, Coldwell Bankers kind of conference here in the Carolinas. And the thing I told agents uh, for that was just doing it, just putting it out there. Um, I think a lot of people don't do video and don't market themselves in that way because it is a little uncomfortable Um, because they're concerned about what they look like or what people are going to think or what they sound like. And I used to have a huge issue with my voice when I listened back to recordings. But you got to just kind of get over that stuff because it really doesn't matter. Everybody knows what you look like. Everybody, you know, they know what you sound like. And for me, it's always about getting in front of those people who I don't already know. Right. Those are the people I want to reach. I want to keep everybody else updated on what I'm doing, but I also want to reach those those new people, those new prospective clients as well. That's an important thing, and I think that's a thing that I see a lot of, of, of businesses in general, not just real estate agents, doing, um, and they don't understand why they're not gaining traction, and they're posting to their own Facebook page, mm-hmm. and that's it. And so they'll, they'll let's say they have 2,000 followers on a Facebook page, and they, they post to their own Facebook page that, you know, this house is on the market or this product is for sale or something. And it gets 30 views and two likes yeah. because their audience internally is is already going to be limited by Facebook's natural organic algorithm, right? So they're not ever going to show it to all 2,000 people right away. But the in your case, you know, the people who have liked your Facebook page are probably past clients, um, and things like that. And so to reach a new audience, you have to go outside of your current Facebook marketplace, right? Yeah. You have to go into a different space. Yeah. You can't just post to your internal Facebook like page and hope that those 5,000 or however many you have, I haven't looked, but you know, however many, like the one is there that's going to see it and want to buy, right? You have to, you have to hit a new audience and you have to kind of get outside of your comfort zone sometimes to do that. When I, I hear people say sometimes, well, I put this out, there was a great post or a great, I did my first video and it only had 150 views. And I go, a hundred, when was the last time you did something to where you got in front of 150 people? That's a lot of people. I mean, even to put something out and get in front of 25, I mean, that's 25 people that saw your content. Um, and I think if you really, thought about it more and you know if I filled a room and ask all these people to watch my real estate video how how if you know how few is it is it still worth it I think anytime you can get in front of anybody and chances are the people who watch it are going to be your biggest fans Mm -hmm. so if that's 20 40 50 150 it doesn't matter and getting I know it can be really uh, it can be difficult to build a following one thing I really focused hard on my Facebook following, and I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing on YouTube. I was just kind of housing my videos there. But now my big shift has been, okay, I've grown my Facebook following. I need to get them to my YouTube page where I'm posting my vlogs and doing other content because, I mean, YouTube is really where it, where it's at. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, I heard uh, Gary Vee say recently, YouTube is the new TV, and the right. TV is the radio. Right, absolutely. How many times do you drive down the road listening to something on YouTube? Right. It's hopefully not driving and watching <laughs> and, and listening. But, I mean, so, you know, and Instagram is something that, um, you know, last year I had three referrals or three leads come in that turned into sales from Instagram. And I don't put nearly enough into Instagram's kind of the place where I dump um, 
you know, content, right. just hoping somebody sees it, but it's actually getting the same or more views than Facebook. Um, but, I, you know, there's always, there's so much you can do, it's important not to get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. I just recently hired a marketing person to help me build my site and build my content, and just doing that is kind of, taking a little weight off my shoulders to right. help through the whole thing. Absolutely, yeah. That's, so there's there's always that, that thing that we, we talk about is that you can't be good at everything. Mm -hmm. And you always need to find people who can fill that space for you, right? So like you may not be good as a camera operator, but you can find a videographer to come follow you around. Or you can't – I'm where I struggle is like the, the like QuickBooks, right? Like that's, okay. my, that's my Achilles heel. Like I hate – that stuff like that's something Beav and I are like the exact same like I need my he always talks about he needs a super nerd Alex I'm like I need a super nerd Alex like uh you know like that's the thing but um but going back to the point one of the things we also say a lot is that in, you know when you talked about only 150 people saw it that is a huge bump from what you did without a video right yeah. like there's there's and we always talk about like you know you, you could be one post away Right. I mean, how much is that if that video was shown to 150 people and one of those 150 people said, oh, I know somebody who might be interested in that house and shared it with them and they bought the house. I guarantee you that video was worth making. Yeah, it's absolutely worth it. Yeah. You know, and like we, we've we've talked about this before, too, is like, you know, the, your audience size isn't as important as making sure that you're getting in front of the right audience. Right. So it's like if if I did a newsletter and it had 10,000 subscribers to the newsletter and not one of them actually cared about it and opened it and they were all in India, yeah. right? It, it doesn't help me. But yeah. if that one person who's really interested in my newsletter is Bill Gates, yeah. right? That's a thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, it, having the right stuff, the right content for your audience, I think is really important. So Patrick, where can people find you? Uh, they can find, oh, I didn't even think about this. <laughs> um, so my website is, I'm really proud of this website. So scmidlandsagent.com. Um, on Facebook, Midlands Agent. Um, but you Google me and I'll come up. Nice. I love what you did. So you, you really sort of worked the content strategy on there with people searching for uh, like, you know, agent in the Midlands kind of a yeah. thing, right? Yeah, that's that's really smart. That's Because really, yeah. a lot of people do, they, they go with their own, name for that and there's a lot of value in that but but having something that is so searchable i think is a good strategy as well yeah absolutely so cool well uh that's it thank you guys so much for listening if you haven't already please subscribe you can find the podcast on brody-media.com or you can search for it on itunes and you can also find it on youtube if you want to watch the video version so until next time thanks so much god bless and we'll see you later thank you